It's five days before December 25, and I guess it is but fitting that we talk about Christmas. If some crazy guy asks you the question, is Christmas unconstitutional? What will be your response? Before we proceed, kindly support this channel by clicking the word subscribe and the bell icon now. After that, kindly click the like button too because this will inspire me to write more materials, record videos, and share them to you for free. Friends, join me as we learn some constitutional issues regarding Christmas. Is Christmas unconstitutional? Section 6103, Title 5 of the United States Code provides for Christmas Day or December 25 as one of the legal public holidays in the U.S. On August 4, 1998, Richard Ganulin, a lawyer based in Ohio, filed a complaint against the United States of America seeking to remove Christmas from the list of federal holidays. He argued that this amounted to a government endorsement of Christianity in violation of the Establishment Clause. The Establishment Clause is found in the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, which provides in part that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. In 1999, the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Ohio dismissed Ganolin's lawsuit, holding that the establishment of Christmas Day as a legal public holiday does not violate the establishment clause because it has a valid secular purpose. It does not have the effect of endorsing religion in general or Christianity in particular. Moreover, it does not impermissibly cause excessive entanglement between church and state. This was upheld by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. I found the poetic prologue of the order granting the motions to dismiss, dated December 6, 1999, which was written by District Judge Susan Dlot, really amusing. I will just share some parts of it. Judge Dlot wrote, One is never jailed for not having a tree, for not going to church, for not spreading glee. We're all better for Santa, the Easter Bunny too, and maybe the Great Pumpkin, to name just a few. An extra day of his hardly high treason, it may be spent as you wish, regardless of reason. The court, having read the lessons of Linz, refuses to play the role of the Grinch. There is room in this country and in all our hearts too, for different convictions and a day of two. Now, in the Philippines, our constitution also contains an establishment clause. It is found in the first part of Section 5, Article 3, or the Bill of Rights of the 1987 Constitution, which states that no law shall be made respecting an establishment of religion. This is so because in the Declaration of Principles and State Policies found in Article 2 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, particularly Section 6 thereof, it is provided that the separation of church and state shall be inviolable. On July 24, 2007, then President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo signed into law Republic Act No. 9492, which rationalized the celebration of national holidays and amended some provisions of the Administrative Code of 1987. The law retained Christmas Day or December 25 as one of the national regular holidays. 
in our history, nobody dared to file a case questioning the constitutionality of Christmas as a regular national holiday. Will you? I won't! Unless you want to become the Filipino version of the Grinch or the one who tried to steal Christmas. I think any attempt to duplicate what attorney Richard Ganulin did in 1998 in the U.S. will suffer the same fate here in the Philippines. But what about religious holiday displays on public property like the Nativity or Santa Claus or the Cross in government buildings or premises? Are they constitutional? What do you think? The answer is, it depends. The determination of the constitutionality of religious holiday displays requires an analysis that is heavily fact-driven, meaning the slightest change in facts could completely change whether a holiday display is constitutional. In the United States, there are three U.S. Supreme Court cases that deal specifically with this issue. The first is Lynch v. Donnelly, decided in 1984 with the citation 465 U.S. 668. The issue raised in this case was whether the city of Potaket, Rhode Island could place a crash or a nativity scene in a city park as part of a Christmas display containing other less explicit symbols of the holidays. This had been the city's tradition for more than 40 years. Speaking for the majority opinion, Chief Justice Warren Earl Berger argued that the placement of the crash did not violate the establishment clause because the nativity scene was included in the display of non-religious symbols such as a teddy bear, dancing elephant, Christmas tree, a wishing well, and a Santa Claus house, suggesting that the display was not a promotion of Christianity. Moreover, he argued that the Establishment Clause does not require absolute separation of church and state, but rather an accommodation between the two. The second is Allegheny versus American Civil Liberties Union or ACLU in 1989. In this case, a crash or a nativity scene which was donated to the city by a Roman Catholic group was displayed on a grand staircase in the county courthouse of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Above the nativity was an angel with a banner that read, Gloria in Excelsis Deo or Glory to God in the Highest. The Supreme Court ruled that this was unconstitutional and violative of the Establishment Clause because it was indisputably religious rather than secular in nature. Interestingly, in the same case, it was also ruled that the display of a menorah alongside a Christmas tree outside another government building and about a block from the county courthouse did not violate the establishment clause, holding that the combination of the two secular symbols was a recognition of the winter holiday season and not an endorsement of Judaism and or Christianity. The third is the 1995 case of Capitol Square Review and Advisory Board versus Pinet where the court held that a private group of individuals, particularly the Ku Klux Klan, could validly erect a cross in the Ohio State House Plaza during the holiday season. In reaching its decision, the court heavily relied on the fact that the KKK had requested permission to display the cross in the same manner as any other private group was required to do, that the park had oftentimes been open to the public for various religious activities, and that the KKK expressly disclaimed 
any government endorsement of the cross. Applying the three U.S. cases, what do you think of these Christmas decorations in various government buildings and premises? Are they constitutional? Do they violate the Establishment Clause of the 1987 Constitution? Deck the halls with boughs of holly Fa la 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 Tis the season to be jolly Fa la 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 Done we now our gay apparel Fa la 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 Troll the ancient yuletide carol Fa la 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 Fast away the old year passes Fa la 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 Hail the new year lads and lasses Fortunately, up to now, after hundreds of years of celebrating Christmas, no Filipino had dared to file a case questioning this practice. Will you? I won't! To borrow Judge Susan Glott's words in Ganolin, nobody wants to play the role of the Grinch. No one wants to steal Christmas. I think we Filipinos, even though we have so many religions, are tolerant of each other's different beliefs. And this is commendable. Friends, let me share with you some interesting facts about Christmas which you may not be aware of. In Italy, decorations are only put up on December 8th or the day of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary. While in the U.S., the season begins in November during Thanksgiving. In the Philippines, the Christmas season begins on September 1, which marks the start of the so-called Burr months. During this time, we see this guy in our Facebook walls and hear his famous song, Pasko Na Sintako. Pasko na Sintako. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, it's Christmas in our heart. Whenever I see girls and boys selling lanterns. Thus, we celebrate Christmas for more than four months, lasting until January during the celebration of the Three Kings. And while Muslims don't celebrate Christmas, they believe that Jesus is a great prophet and the Messiah. In the Noble Quran, he is called Isa, peace be upon him. In the Christian world, we have Jesus, the Messiah, whereas in Islam, they have Isa al-Masi. The same Jesus or Isa, peace be upon him, who was born of the Virgin Mary or Mariam. Do you know the names of the helpers of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Rudolph is the ninth reindeer. There are other eight reindeers who help him. They are Dasher, Comet, Dancer, Cupid, Prancer, Thunder, Vixen, and Blitzen. Do you know the biggest Christmas gift ever in history? The biggest Christmas gift was the Statue of Liberty, which was given by France to the United States of America in the year 1886. I hope our good friend China will one day believe in Christmas and in the spirit of giving, so that China will finally give up all its claims to the disputed islands in the South China Sea or West Philippine Sea. And they can add Hong Kong if they want to so that Disneyland will be ours too. And there you have them, friends. I hope all of us will have a restful, peaceful, and blessed Christmas. Where, how, and with whom will you be celebrating the holidays? 
I would love to know your thoughts. So please share your answers, if any, in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, kindly click like and subscribe to my channel. You may want to click the bell icon too so that you will be notified whenever I upload new videos. Please feel free to share this to your friends. This is your Monday Habit Demands Word. Thank you. Merry Christmas to those who believe and observe it. And Happy Holidays to everyone else. Godspeed, everyone. It's five days before December 25, and it is but fitting. Before we proceed, please, friends, join me as we learn about some concepts. Friends, join me as we learn Section 6103, Title 5 of the United States Code. United, United States, United States Code, Title 5 of the United States Code provides for this, this amounted to a government endorsement of Christianity. In this, in violation of the establishment, one is never jailed for not having a tree, for not going to church, for not spreading glee. The one is never jailed for not having a tree, for not going to church, for not spreading glee. We are all better than Satan. On July 4, 2007, then on July 4, 19, on July 24, on July 24, 2007, then President Gloria Macapagal Aurora that deal is specifically, 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 ah, check, check, specifically, 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 the third is the 1995 case of Capitol Square Review and Advisory Council Board. And there you have them, friends. I hope all of us will have a restful, peaceful, high salamat.